Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg, and it's the awesome cast for this April 14th, 2015 pre-tax day. Hope you're turbo taxing and tax slayer. Is that still a thing or, or oh, anything like use. that? Is that tax what you slayer. use? Oh, it's, it's amazing. We have to use, well, we have to use like small business turbo tax because everything is going on around here. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not sure if we've done everything right. <laughs> uh, the, the number could be better. That's for sure. But anyways, um, it's going to be more complicated next year because we're incorporated now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh but this is the uh podcast where we're live from pittsburgh pa where we talk geeky and technology things and i fixed my hair on the video because i realized the headphones are getting weird um here in the pittsburgh area uh with people that are using this stuff and, and enthusiasts and all kinds of fun stuff um and uh it was actually fun i was at a uh, meet and greet that we were that we'll talk about here in a moment um where they're like so so what what brings you here to alpha lab are you a entrepreneur or something i was like i'm kind of a tech enthusiast <laughs> like that's what i told like two people sure why not i've been i've been experimenting with what my line is at these events because i could say almost anything at this point mm-hmm. um, um with all the stuff that i do so uh but john chichilla he's on the couch joining us in studio again back he's in studio a back from studio b although studio b is looking quite sexy over there oh thank you it's looking good i like the improvements you've been making i've been trying to try and add better lighting trying to get i threw up the different webcam mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's coming along coming along i like it i like it and of course you can find out more about what we're doing at awesomecast.net you can drop us a line we're awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com tweet us at awesomecast facebook us google plus us we got actually a great facebook group that apparently i still don't read john's messages on i'm sorry <laughs> oh, that's um, okay i have a lot of groups <laughs> a lot of groups i've been trying to get into the pittsburgh bloggers one more um anyways I, I, when did I add myself to a Pittsburgh entrepreneurs group? I go, when did this happen? Hey, you just hit like. You just yeah, you're just <laughs> like that seems like a good idea. Sure, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, but now also please subscribe to us. We're all over the place on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, awesome, uh, iHeart Radio, not Awesome Radio. That's our radio. Um, but anyways, uh, and of course, we got a mini awesome cast we do throughout the week. You can check out. Um, first top of the show, Apple Watch stuff. Which we'll, we'll, Are we going to touch on that? Do we have uh, I have something some, for Some it. stuff on that? Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, but go to Sorgatron.com. I actually had a lot of fun. Uh, Friday, um, I want to tell you why you don't need an Apple Watch on oh. Sorgatron.com. Uh, it's up there. I want to hear what you guys think and also some other stuff. And please sign up to the newsletter. A lot of uh, creative creative stuff that I'm tinkering with. That's going to show up there first. Um, so please, Sorgatron.com and check that out. So let's get with it with our awesome things of the week. And uh, you, you want to start? It's Apple Watch. Let's lead with it. This is what everybody's talking about. Let's get it out of the way. What's going on with uh, what we got here for the Apple Watch so far? So um, what I actually have is an app that's already in the in the pipeline. Uh, so so the Apple Watch isn't out yet. Like it hasn't shipped for anybody yet, right? It has not shipped. But you for can anybody. go to the store and try it on. Yes. Okay. So by appointment recommended. By appointment recommended. So okay, sure. I, I'm gonna have to try that. So you can, you don't have to make an appointment. So if you're walking by an Apple store, it's and, just like the Genius Bar. It, yeah. It's appointment or first come first serve. Right. So okay, that, that makes sense. Um, so, but in the store, you can, yes, you can try on, I don't know if all the stores have whatever they call the top of the line. The, the, the elite, the edition, the, the edition. I don't know. If, I, I don't, don't know if all the stores to. have. I don't the even. Edition. If I go, I don't even want to. I just want to try it. You know, right. I just want to compare. I'll put it on right next to the pebble and really tick tee the When guy what off. sealed the deal for me? So a lot of people from what I've been reading have been going to the store and then ordering. So it's doing well for them to do this methodology of we're going to let you try it on in the store and then determine if you want to pre-order. The thing that's rough about that is you have all of the Apple fans out there that stayed up till 3 a.m. because they do their midnight West Coast you release. You told me there was like a slumber party. There was a slumber party on iMore um, if you were in their forms it, and people talking about how many machines and devices they had ready to try to get in and get the first of the devices um 
With that being said, I ordered a little after 7 a.m., which you figure release would have been 3 a.m. our time, Eastern Standard. Um, and I was back ordered till June. Now they just give you the month, they don't give you the date. Um, but keeping in mind that April 24th is the release day and when people should first start getting their devices. So mm -hmm. it is quite a wait. One of the things though that sealed the deal for me not changing, definitely not changing my order, um, was the fact that the sport can use all of the other bands. So you don't have to use the magical rubber what did they call I can't even know what the word what was, was the, the, that, they, that they obviously invented for yes. this material. <clears throat> um, but you can use any of the other bands, which to me is a, is a definite selling point. And the device doesn't look that much different, especially I bought the black, like the black case looking one. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's the equivalent of space gray, I think. Um, so it doesn't have as much of an, an, an aluminum look to it. Um, that being said, my pick of the week is workflow, um, which if you're familiar with workflow, workflow for iOS, it lets you pretty much chain together a bunch of tasks, almost like Automator does on the Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and they've added in, they've already added in their app watch or their Apple Watch um, tasks and, and workflows. So they have uh, 200 automated tasks um, with a, that allow you to mix and match. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see here in the picture, they have Uber to your next event. So it obviously looks up what your next event is and what the address is, and it'll automatically get an Uber for you. Um, map to the nearest coffee shop, tip calculator, um, read aloud the New York Times, tweet your latest photo. Post to Slack. Post Slack. I don't even, what is, is Slack like a? Slack what? is, I believe it's like a business internal social networky thing. I think if, you are, a you're, lot you're of right. people have been talking about lately. Yeah, because uh, they got I, breached. I think that's why. Oh, was that why everybody's about talking about that? No, actually, a lot of people have been talking about it. Like, I've run into people saying, oh, yeah, we're using Slack and doing this, this, and that. You know, and um, yeah, I think that's, it, it, it's like a, I want to, I want to say like I want to say like a base camp, but probably okay. a lot more than a base camp or a uh, oh what's not oh what's the other one WeChat I think is the other one mm -hmm. like those are those internal I've, I've ones. Seen we. So yeah yeah so um, but no no but that makes sense you're you're in that you you have that social network and and to post to that uh, internally for business that makes a lot of sense actually save save a voice memo um, yeah what, what I like about this though is you think about the size of the watch right. Mm -hmm. And you only have so much real estate, and you're not going to put a full UI in there. Right, right. So this chains together a bunch of what you would, a bunch of tasks that you would want to be able to do, and and allocates them to a single tap. Um, it looks like from the UI you can add multiple, and it's going to create pages because you can see the little dots at the bottom. So you'll be able to scroll through a bunch of these, um, and then activate them right from the watch. And since the watch is going to be connected to your phone, um, boom, you can you can do whatever you need to do. So I thought this was I thought this was a good use of the the way they have this looking. It was a good use of the watch UI. That's what I think is going to make or break the watch. Personally, is what um, the app developers do and and leverage in the UI. Um, I'm guessing WWDC is right around the corner, so we're going to see a a lot more capability come to the dev kit. I feel like this is where we're going to figure out. I think this is going to be ground zero for where we're going to figure out the best way to design our watch. It's going to come from Apple. The people that work on Apple things are usually the best designers, right? I would definitely agree with that. So I think you're going to find <clears throat> much how we have so much stuff. You know, the functional things are coming from Android and carrying over to Apple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or iPhone. Uh, and the pretty things may be the other way. Because mm -hmm. cause we've talked about this before. There's the functional side. There's the features coming from the Android side. There's the looks and, and easeability of the iPhone. And they're getting so similar. I mean, how pretty is Android right now, right, in it's, comparison? It's getting a lot better with... Yeah. with um, I can never remember what Google. there was an material design. In material design, there's an initiative, initiative in like a, a 3.0, I think it was, where it was... Um, um, you know, but, but butter, 
We talked yeah. about butter, which was butter, which was the <laughs> was the uh, we want to make everything smoother here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not as herky jerky as it used to be because there wasn't it wasn't smooth stuff worked, but it was it was it was jerky. It just the, the the animations and the movements just didn't work as smooth as they did on an iPhone from right off the top. And Lollipop's getting there. I mean, it is on the brink of. The, the capability is there for a developer to build like the developers build on iOS. Mm -hmm. What worries me is still the fragmentation across the app store or I'm sorry, across the, the manufacturers of the handsets. Cause there's actually a memory leak in like certain versions of lollipop that, that Google has admitted to and it's in the next build and, and et cetera. The problem is think about how long, it's been since Lollipop was announced and released and how many phones still don't have Lollipop and now you have Lollipop out there that's broken. You want to read some funny stuff, um, search, Google search uh, Verizon Samsung Galaxy S5 Lollipop upgrade and, and how it's just, it's creating all kinds of problems on people's phones. I don't, I don't know how Verizon even let it out into the wild, but it's neither here nor there. Um, but that being said, if the manufacturers can get can step up their game with with the OS releases, I think Android's at the point to be a major contender. Because where where what what you're talking about is so you have from the Apple side, everyone coming in with the design, and you have the Android with feature functionality. If they can get the design, then they're they're gonna do a lot, especially in the United States, um, versus just having some some low end devices overseas. Um, I guess, but only time will tell. Uh, I mean, after using the, the Galaxy S six for a little over a week now, it is an amazing, beautiful, fast, great battery life, very good camera device. I mean, it's they're they're getting there. They still have the Touch Wiz interface, which. I think they've done a lot with. Um, the one thing that I that found interesting too is they started adding themes. So you, the, in the Samsung store, you can add themes. Um, but to me, I guess we should jump back to the Apple Watch. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm interested to see what the Apple Watch brings and, and how many people jump. That's the other thing is you have the developers behind it and you, people are gonna jump on this bandwagon. Um, and like I said, WWDC is right around the corner, and they're going to release more capabilities in the dev kit to then be able to develop even more for the watch. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, so looking out for that. I, yeah, I can't wait to see these kinds of things popping up. And uh, I talked about it in, my, in the one I mentioned on Sorgatron.com. Uh, you know, I was really surprised how my smart watches are popping up. And I talked on there, mm -hmm. I was actually dropping off some of the old computers. Now, there's a few less around mm -hmm. here. Um uh, at Construction Junction, they do a, a great. If you're in Pittsburgh, Construction Junction does a great uh, with E-Loop. They do a, uh, a recycling program for computers, so uh, they take care of everything. I think they even destroy the hard drives and everything in a proper way. Uh, so I don't. I'm kind of allowed to be lazy that way. Uh, but the guy had a watch. I'm like, oh, what? What do you? They saw my Pebble, and 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 we talked about it. And the guy had something, something called Berg, B U R G. And you know, there's a lot of hmm. these out there, and there's a lot of options out there, and, and you know. Uh, Will's talked about last week the basic peak, and that's all he needs. And, and I think that's, you know, he, this is the Cadillac, I think, right now of, and it can be as much as a Cadillac um, with the <laughs> Apple Watch. And But uh, I think there's going to be several levels, and it's okay if you're not the guy with the Apple Watch. You know what I mean? Um, for that kind of swaggy thing. So, so I had, uh, oh, I actually had fun. Uh, last week, I, I actually talked about this on Sorgatron.com. And, um, and, uh, you, you know what? Now I'm confusing myself because I'm wondering which one I talked about the Apple Watch. That might have been on awesomecast.net now I'm thinking about it. Uh, but I attended up to, uh, had an open house and we talked about that. I also went back over to East Liberty. There's so much stuff happened. Have you been to East Liberty lately? Mm -mm. It's, it's crazy. It is our own little Silicon Valley anymore. Oh. Alpha Labs over there, Thrill Mills over there, Google, of course. I love you can just like go hang out at a coffee club and run into somebody that works at Google. You know, this is like a weird little world that I'm like, like, I gotta tell you, I was in San Francisco. I did not run into one person that worked at Google. Pittsburgh, easy. <laughs> you know where to find them here. Anyways, um, but 
<laughs> I went down to Alpha Lab Gear was having their open coffee club, and we've talked about these before. We, you know, that's how we found our friends from. Uh, I ran. Geez, I can't remember the name again. Our friends with the little app with the Bluetooth and the localized networking. Um, who are you? Who yes, are you? Who are you? It's, I've been, it, it's been half a week. I've been trying to remember that name. I actually ran into them. They're doing very well. Um, but uh, I actually, I didn't. I don't think I actually ran into like actual Alpha Lab Gear people, but I ran into people from regular alpha lab uh i had a lot of great discussions um um you know talked to a lot of people uh but and it's a great space i don't know if you've ever seen um and this is of course this is where um you know our guest was from a, a, when when uprise was going on in the next room this is that space yes. okay. that, this is exactly that space we were talking about um and i've been there before we, we actually did interviews there uh, previously as well um talking to some of these companies um but it, it, I, it's a nice wide open space. I love like if you tell in the background of these pictures here, um, those are garage doors and that's their office that they're given. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, but uh, the couple of them that I, I ran into and started talking with uh, this time, uh, this there's one called uh, one group in there called Sikahu. And this is <clears throat> a quarter card connecting with local home improvement pros. And uh, the idea is really to, you know, the, the general line is really kind of Uberize uh, uh, home improvement ho uh, workers, right? Contractors. Huh. So they can find, you know, people in their neighborhoods to, you know, find work with. And, um, you know, uh, and it was kind of, and I, I did have the discussion. I was like, well, what do you think about like the Amazon? Thing when I can find a plumber and everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, yep, we're paying attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I didn't know this. I didn't know uh, Google released something similar as well. Oh, I didn't know that. So um, I, so, so I think there's going to be a lot of like, well, you know, everybody's kind of running towards the same goal. These guys are in there as well. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of where these guys end up. You know, I'm, you know, honestly, it looks like it's one of those things that if they do something uh, on their back end that the other guys haven't yet, yeah, maybe get an acquisition out of it or something, right? Um, but, you know, that's kind of the way some of these go. Uh, really good, really good talk with um, Zach over there, uh, who is the co-founder. Um, but I think everybody's a co-founder on this level. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so uh, it's seekahoo.com if you want to see what they're doing. And again, it's, uh, you know, it, actually, I think that's Zach right there. Uh, that's the home improvement guy. <laughs> so... <laughs> Awesome. Um, and also, the other one, uh, this guy was from Latvia that I talked with. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Armin? Armin Bimitov out there. Um, this was an interesting concept. They got they got somebody, uh, actually, they got a guy from CMU helping them with the algorithm for this. And on the surface, it's uh, travelwits.com. And uh, it looks like uh, just another travel... Uh, kind of uh, web, you know website. I'm just plugging some dates, and I'm always looking to see how expensive it is to go to San Francisco these days. And uh, but the, but the idea is, as they flesh this thing out, is now you notice to say searching for airports within driving distances, right? And it's taking not just like finding a flight to San Francisco. It's also saying like the idea he was giving me was like, okay, you're looking for a beach vacation. And actually, this is telling me it might be cheaper for me to take a train. <laughs> How long does the train take? 49 hours and 59 minutes. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Well, actually, so that's the that's actually the more expensive <clears throat> one. There's an 11-hour one for $120 to Chicago. Oh, and then, oh, okay, so you go one one to step by step on this one. Um, but it's actually taken, you know, looking looking at that. Uh, the example I gave is so, okay, you want a beach vacation. It's so much to go to Bermuda. Or maybe it's four hours to drive to Myrtle Beach. So it's really maximizing your budget mm -hmm. in that and taking all these factors. Like maybe it's better for you to drive. Maybe it's better to take a train to, than, than, a, than a plane. Because you think most of those things you go to, you're just looking for flights. Right. Period. And they bundle in a hotel. This is, you know, and, and, you know New York City. How many ways can we get to New York City? We know. Right. Megabus, mega bus, train, uh, Greyhound, plane. I've done three of the four of those, right? Driving, of course. Mm -hmm. And it factors that in, factors, I think, gas prices and everything, and say, what is the cheapest way for you to do this? So you like, I got $1,000. What what kind of vacation can I do? Um, I, you know, I think I might want to do this for my anniversary. We should just go to Erie because we know that's cheap, right? Mm -hmm. But what else is there that I'm not really thinking about? You that's, know? that's really cool. So if they get this going and the algorithm really works out, um, I think that, that, that could be a really uh, a fun thing for for getting my ass out of the house more so for one thing what was the what was the website travelwits.com 
Combine driving with flying and save big. So there you go. Drive, fly, save is on the back of the card there. So uh, so thank you, everybody out there. And, and again, um, uh, the hospitality out there. I love talking with everybody about what's going on and what's going on in the industry. And also a big shout out to Up2. Um, I believe it's whatareyouupto.com. Yep. Uh, what are you up to dot org give them a shout and and like i said i talked about that the other day on sorgatron.com and they're doing a fun service where uh they're they're actually providing uh, very uh straightforward services for web design websites social media for small businesses so you're right. like okay i can and, and they're very big on the education on what do i do after this so they don't need to like, retain somebody you know because mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people get stuck uh, i've had to rescue a couple of companies already that were you know locked in paying a monthly thing ridiculous like a hundred bucks a month for this um for somebody basically not updating and keeping their website hostage nice and i moved That's them all to squarespace <laughs> now i'm working well uh for both of them yeah uh, well one i i mean i actually have a I, I am the regular guy and i maintain it um okay. the other guys um i left them as social media services in december and they haven't called me with a problem. The only issue is that I have to forward them because a renewal just came up. So I had, I'm just like, hey, by the way, you're going to get a bill. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's because I'm still a contact on it. Yeah. Uh, but it, but they have the keys to everything. They can take me off everything. So it's not, it's not a problem. And there's another one I set up for a pro wrestler, actually. Um, uh, Zach Allen. His, his is a Squarespace I set up for him. And and charge like nothing because it's Squarespace. You know, it's like it's my time. That's it. You mm -hmm. know, to, the, to that regard. So, um, but no, cool things. Have you seen the, is it the grid? Oh, we thought, yeah, I put this in the group. It, so is this, in, and Wix is another one that some people are using. And, oh, who was it I was talking with? Somebody I talked to, I think it was at Up2. Um, and it might have been actually Cindy that, that that's regularly on the show. We got to get her back, too. I was bugging her about that, too. She's busy. She's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, Wix and, and Grid. Grid is a new one. So these, like, WYSIWYG, anybody can design them websites. I thought the point behind Grid, and I haven't gotten, I was going to actually try to like see if there's a demo or how you get signed up or whatever. Grid is supposed to be, imagine Tumblr. So Tumblr, right, you can, you pick your theme and then you can post pictures, video, text, a full-fledged blog, however mm -hmm. you want to post, that's what you can post. Grid is supposed to pretty much be the same type of thing. But then it auto it designs itself around the content. So it's like responsive in a whole new level. Well, like, yeah, like when you think WYSIWYG, you're thinking, okay, what I see is what I get when I design it. This is post some content, and we're gonna let it design itself. Wow! It's like Skynet just became self-aware. <laughs> it's like Skynet. <laughs> it's like Skynet went to graphic design school. <laughs> And, and I think it's a really interesting concept. I mean, mm -hmm. if, whether you're going to post video or you're going to post a blog or whatever, it'll it'll kind of design as it goes, or it's supposed to design as you go. So I'm guessing um, if, if you post more pictures than text, it's going to be more of a photography oh, wow. theme type thing. Oh, guess what I'm see? Like, with. look at that! Isn't that cool? So, well, I mean, this is all mock up and everything right. that we're showing on the video uh, from their website. Now, this you can't get into this yet. It's on a pre order, and there's like, you know, I went up there and it's like, you know, become founding member like thirty three something something, right? I mean, it's well, that's interesting. Like, right, they're up to thirty three nine oh two, thirty three thousand. So there you go. So I mean, it, that's. But still, so because I mean, you do get caught up because like, you have great templates to start off with when you're doing Squarespace. But if you you can mess it up pretty good, it's harder to do that. Um, I had somebody with the certain design sensibility that wanted to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, you know, it's kind of a you know that was great five years ago kind of concept, and I was like, I don't want to do that here, and it's not going to work here. You know, mm -hmm. it rest Squarespace restrains restrains you mostly from making bad decisions. Okay, <laughs> it feels like the things that people ask me to do are usual things that I don't think are a good idea, anyways. And, um, and thankfully, there's not a way to do it like they. But I think it might be just the the, the structure of, mm -hmm. of how it is. But no, this is one to look at. It, I'd say it's ninety six dollars. I think for the first year they say. Um, I hope that they have. Um, like a trial or something to check it out. 
um, and in mobility and mobile tools you'll actually use. I got to be honest, I never check in on the Squarespace tools. They're there. I got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe it's just the level of the website I have. But uh, if you're a small business or an upstart or a company coming up or something like that, yeah, you don't need to hire. Mm, yeah, people are going to hurt me for this. <laughs> I was like, but no, you don't need to to get started. And uh, if you want to do something more specialized, yes, you need to. I'm actually looking at a designer for a website I'm working on. Um, one of our internal ones, because I'm like, I can't do this. You know, I need to have somebody to specialize on it. I can't put it on Squarespace because of certain functionalities. But again, a small business guy that's like, I'm just going to sell my widgets here on the internet, sign into Squarespace, maybe make a squareup.com store if they if you're not allowed to in Squarespace. That was the biggest issue. Uh, we we're selling, um, um, the guy was selling natural herbs, basically. It was uh, flagged as pseudo pharmacology. He didn't even know what that was. And uh, we couldn't use, because um, uh, on Square, space and this is where the names get confusing they use stripe for all of their transactions and it was stripe that flagged our issue and but we signed up with square the mm -hmm. squareup.com the little the little dongle that you can buy stuff on your phone um they already had an account because they were experimenting with the take credit cards at the at the uh at the store and uh and that's their store now that's their online store um friends of mine are using it to sell tickets you know for their shows so I, I think it's a it's very useful in that. And I don't think there's any wrong, anything wrong with that. All right. And then, hey, want to touch base on uh, one more awesome thing of the week uh, from Wheels in the chat room. It is he got the new Asus TF103C. That's a sexy name, right? TF103C. Did you get all that? Did you get all that? TF, I, I got it right here. TF one hundred three C. It's a the, okay. It's a transformer it's pad. A transformer. Actually, it is Android. Okay. Um, and it's look at this. This is, I'm actually looking at these. Um, not this in particular because this is Android, but I want this solution. I've been looking at this solution for my wife for her next computer because I was thinking, why not just get her a Windows tablet? Does she really need much more computing power than that? Right. Um, and these connect. And so, so for those on audio, uh, we're looking at uh, what is that? A 10 inch? Yeah, it's a 10.1 inch tablet. He says in the chat room, it's an Intel Atom processor, detachable keyboard. Completely comes with it. Um, that's I think that's that's the way to go these days. Mm -hmm. If you're just like I need to type things up, I need something mobile, etc. You know, and, and and some of these keyboards are fairly sturdy, and it clicks on the top, and you can use it as a laptop. You know, I was uh, sitting, I was at the Office Max Depot, whatever one it is, um, and they had one of these, and it took me a second. I was like, oh wait, this is Android. It was one of the Samsung tablets, and I was, you know, plugging away at the keyboard, and I was like, oh wait, you know, um, I think I think you're gonna see more of these, you know. Whereas you know, people have been picking up um, um, MacBook Airs for the longest time. I think you're gonna see more and more people pick these up. I think you see more and more people picking up these Android devices as product productivity machines in this regard. I kind of wish there was a Chrome book version of, of, but then it'd be, uh, you know, the tablets. When, so, so, and that brings up an interesting subject that I was, I was reading a lot about today with Chrome. And have you read about, I think it's called arc welder, arc weld. Yeah. It allows, it allows Android dev developers to port instantly automatically okay. ports i've been over hearing about to chrome i've been hearing about this concept so and, and it's becoming because it's so easy think about it you could take any app that you develop and port it to chrome and it'll be available in a chrome store and it's just it's automatic um the interesting thing that a lot of people are coming back and saying is there needs to be more touchscreen chromebooks because you're porting over touch you're screen porting touchscreen <laughs> but and but everyone that's trying it out is loving it mm -hmm. the fact that all their apps think about it now your app just like it used to be okay the website i visit follows me from my phone to my tablet to my laptop to wherever i go now the app comes with you everywhere you go mm -hmm. um but but to your point the chrome needs to get a touchscreen and i and there's not many there's I, it's not that they need to get one they, they, there's just not that many out there no no I, and you don't think about it but, but it, that's going to be another check market now now all of a sudden your uh, chromebook buying gets slightly more complicated 
What, what I'm interested to see is if you look at the uh, Zeus makes some pretty cool convertible technologies. Have you ever mm -hmm. looked at their pad phone? I haven't seen the pad phone. No. So the pad phone just Google pad phone, and I think it's like the first. And so Zeus P A D F O or P A D P H O N E. I see look it. At the first I see hit. it. So this was one of their technologies where it's, and I actually have seen a couple people at work starting to pick more and more of these up. Mm -hmm. um, it's the cell phone that slides into the back of the tablet to power the tablets. The tablet's Ooh. just a dumb screen. Okay. And you have a phone. Now, obviously, you can't use the phone and the tablet simultaneously. You could take a phone call with like a Bluetooth headset. Right, but it's the same thing. But it's like if I took my iPhone and it slid in and I have an iPad. Right. You're, you're, it's, the, it's the same thing. It's all the same apps anyways for the most part. Um, that's interesting. So now it would be really cool is if you could click a keyboard. If they created this with the keyboard that clicked onto it. So you have this really like, it's not going to be slick. Because, I mean, you have so many things it, sliding to other things. It's doesn't look bad though no it doesn't look horrible no um but, and yeah. they keep up on their android builds which i, I really like about uh, you know I, I i more and more i'm leaning towards As A asus i say asus, asus. i say yeah. asus you say asus um it's probably i think it is asus i like their build i like their now granted like i'm not happy with my laptop because i think it's underpowered but build wise i think it's great i think it's a great kind of um, uh, Mac Air want to be sort of a device here, um, I, I, and I think you know, and they're innovating some stuff. They're doing stuff, you know, and for the most part, they're pretty much. Are, are they straight Android typically? They're pretty close. Pretty close. So I mean, of course, the thing I have is a Nexus. So of course, it's going to be. And they made your Nexus. They made my Nexus. The Asus is huge across the back of it. <laughs> yeah. That's who I had to send it back to when it was it was having a battery problem. So um, I, no, I think it's a. I, I think, I, I, I think, if somebody was getting Android today, I would start them with the Nexus line in general. But I would say if you're looking somewhere else, Motorola, and. Um, Asus, basically. Um, I just like the build quality on it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, nothing is like, I mean, honestly, this is an iPad 1, and like a lot of them don't even stand up to this in build quality. Right. You know? But you're paying for build quality. But there. you're paying for build quality, of course. Yeah. But in comparison, no, I think it's fine. Um, wheels, uh, if you don't mind, how much well, How much is that 10-inch um, he got, the Asus one? Did, so... Um, all right, let's take a touch base real quick. First of all, big congratulations to our friends. SliceOnBroadway.com. You know, today, Chilla, actually, you were here when we were just getting into this. Mm -hmm. Today is Slice on Broadway Day. Let me make sure I got the order right. In Pittsburgh. Okay. And in, and they were recognized uh, with uh, Miss Rudiak in the city council today, downtown. There's a picture on Facebook. I don't have it queued up here. Uh, we'll get that for the later shows probably. Um, but no, we have it shared over on our awesome cast on Facebook, so please go check that out. Uh, congratulations to them for that. Oh, there's a link on their page. I'm an idiot. Um <laughs> But uh, no, that's really cool. I mean, they're one of those companies, and especially in this this neighborhood over here, that's really kind of recovering. I think uh, over the last couple of years, um, their business has been uh, there and growing, and it's uh, it's really cool to see. And uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Rico, Rico is awesome. Rico and his employees have uh, never deviated from day one for their mission to deliver best darn pizza, sandwiches, salads, as money can buy. So there you go officially recognized by the city slice on broadway and you can too slice on broadway.com check them out here on the train tracks here on beachview in the south hills of pittsburgh or uh stop by their newer location in carnegie down on main street mean street yes uh, so check them out let them know that the awesome cast sent you and they're getting you hungry for pizza and follow them on the social media as pgh underscore slice on the twitter and look for slice on broadway on both facebook and instagram Thank you. Thank you for supporting some fine podcasting in Pittsburgh with great pizza. So let's get into some of the news items for this week. I know you said you added a couple of them. Uh, this is a, you know, I love that this fight is happening. This is why this is an awesome thing. Right there at the top, Sheila, if you're following along with my cursor strokes in there. Oh, there we go. So we've been talking about Periscope. We've been talking about Meerkat. I've been talking about it in like every other short mm -hmm. show that I do, it seems. Um, Twitter is pushing celebrities, according to TechCrunch.com, uh, to use to stop using Meerkat. I know I was watching Snoop Dogg in the in the 
in the studio with One Direction the other night on Meerkat. He loves it. He's always popping up. Um, I also noticed that a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show currently with the WWE, Corey Graves, has been using Periscope as he's been traveling around for WWE doing all these pre-shows and talks and everything like that. Um, the war rages on. I understand why. <laughs> they Wait, want no, to... first of all, have you played with these? Uh, I have not. On either have not, end of it. I've, I've seen a lot. I think you posted like some link and it was an aggregator that calculated like oh, the most popular meerkat roulette or was it the best no, of? it was the best of. okay okay there's uh, a bunch of those now so and i was i was watching on there like i don't need to necessarily broadcast myself no but i do find enjoyment in watching others you could do an unboxing with it you can do that. you can do you can do some fun stuff you hey, do my, a lot of stuff. hey my eye wash came in check it out that would be that's a good idea we should we should get on that but that but then i will say periscope that because then it'll be there for 24 hours. Okay. So. And Periscope, I know Meerkat lets you save off to your Both roll. of them let you both save to your save. camera roll. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, both of them. And uh, so I think I, I, I've i been talking about, I've been in the Meerkat camp for the last week, you know. I have a fan on there that pops up, and he's great because I'm like, check out Meerkat. And this dude pops up, and he's going to ask me a question. Um uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Beaver, Beaver Daniels in uh, in Florida that keeps popping up on my on my Meerkats, and I've been playing with them. I'm actually using Periscope tonight. I don't know. You guys, here, I want to screw up the camera. Actually, no, we'll do this. We'll do this. I want to show you guys on the video my rig. This So I got this Periscope rig going on. Uh, I, I gorilla potted it to my mic stand. <laughs> so I just have a shot here. Matt Carlin, Carlin's has apparently been joining us all night long. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, it, you know, I'm having fun with that. And to your question a few weeks ago, there's one in there. There was a top five things that you can get. So your your mirror your your mirror scopes. There you go. Your mirror cats and your periscopes are, don't suck, and they're like rigs, and there's things to attach it to, and everything like that. Microphones, stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just generally excited That's for this okay. topic. <laughs> what were we getting at? You, but, well, but the, you so were, you, you so you've been consuming it. So I've been consuming it, and you're saying that they're they're trying to push celebrities mm -hmm. and publishers to stop using it. To so stop if, using Meerkat. They're trying to get them on, on Periscope. Periscope. Twitter is apparently to the point, according to this article, they're saying that if a celebrity is using Meerkat, they're almost harassed to come onto Periscope. So if and and here's just a random, random question, and maybe I don't understand enough about the back end or, or the the vision for what they want Periscope to be. Mm -hmm. But where are both of these driving traffic? They're driving traffic to Twitter. So Yes I understand. And no, yes and like Periscope kind of. Well, I think Meerkat really helps Twitter in general. It's built on Twitter, and they shut it off. But but you can still like your at replies can still go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, still using it, right? But but it shows how important Twitter thinks this is. That the like, well, we want to be the game in town, and there's interactions and probably more you know better you know integrations coming up for Twitter. But you know, I think it's going to end up this issue. The reason why I'm always hesitant to use Instagram is it doesn't look pretty in Twitter. Because you don't get previews. You don't get previews. Now, I think that's where Periscope's going to beat Meerkat. I'm at the point where I'm just kind of using both concurrently. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, I use them for, you know, the podcast morning recordings. And, like, this morning, I just grabbed the, the, the iPad and I use both. And one person popped up on the one, and I got different audiences too. I had a bunch of, I, what is this? Was 60 some, 60 some people jumped in there, like maybe two or three of them stayed or stuck around at any concurrent level, but you still, like, you have an audience. And I, I don't want to miss either audience. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of playing both sides. I'll have to make a there's decision. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I know there's a, I'll have to make a decision. I'll have to choose wisely eventually. Well, and but, sooner or later, I mean, Twitter could pull the plug if. Ben. Yeah, and in the end, in the end, it, whatever I'm using gets tweeted out and fa thereby Facebooked, and and my audience will find me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so worried about that, but I am worried about what am I exposing myself to, you know? Because I that this these are great, I think, audience generators. I mean, like you know, the reason we, I've been talking about clamor like nonstop the last month. I know. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but I'm seeing all these people jump on there and know what we're doing here now. And 
not much interaction, but likes and fit, follows and whatever. But I'm I'm trying to build an audience, and and if I look at a Meerkat or a Periscope, and I'm seeing a bunch of random people popping in and are finding me on those services in a new way, I'm going with whoever gets me the most people, right? Because I'm in building off. I mean, I'm I'm into building this community, this community, and the wrestling community, and and you know everything we're doing podcasting around. You know, um, I mean that's what I think is important. Periscope's nicer looking, has more features. I like Meerkat because they're the the upstart company. I'm kind of <laughs> cheering for them a little bit. So uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of playing both sides. But it looked like the last time we were using that you were using it here and you were really showing it off. Mm -hmm. To me, it looked like Meerkat had some nicer function and some nicer capability, whereas Periscope. And I can't remember what it You looked. thought Periscope looked rough to start off with. I thought Periscope looked rough. I think it looked smoother. It was just stats at the end of it. You pop it up and it shows you where you're at. Like it shows a map of, oh, this person's in New York City. You know, I was pulling up uh, Crystal with Lipson uh, that, that uh, you know met over at uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh. Uh, she's in uh, NMX, NMX New Media Expo uh, down in Las Vegas. It pulls up, oh, she's in Las Vegas, and da da da. You know, um, I, uh, Periscope wins a little bit because you do have that replay. And where I didn't think I wanted that initially, and that's part of my choice is, is this something I might want to grab later? You know, is this the Snapchat or is this the, I don't know, is this the Twitter? Mm -hmm. basically is this something that i'm like if this goes away i don't care we're just screwing around or is this the oh i kind of want people to check this out if they tune in a couple minutes too late right mm -hmm. um you know that's that's the juggle you know you got to kind of think about what that content is you're making and what window do you want to provide to them do you want to create scarcity that oh you aren't tuning in you missed something good or do you want to create the ah, i want to give you an extra chance to watch this thing because it's a little more important that i think you should see this and find this so, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with those. And it's, it's, it's an interesting thing that, as a content provider, uh, haven't had to think like that, you know. And the, these Snapchats and stuff like this make you start thinking about that. And, and, and why do we do this? And that's a big question. Well, why would I want to do that? Why, why am I going to make this content that just goes away on Snapchat? It's like, well, because the people that catch it are going to be your best fans. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the people that are really dedicated to it and feel a part of it. And they're not going away if they're going that far into it. And the more you introduce those people to that, that's how you build an audience. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I got to say on that. <laughs> um, what do you got in there? I know you got a couple of things in the uh, document. So would you trust your voice? So we have we have pin passwords we have pattern passwords we have fingerprint passwords would you trust your voice to unlock your device not the morning after podcast day <laughs> well and that's where i wonder how how accurate it's going to be android i mean, I mean we've, some, we've, we've people know when i was doing the thing where i just rolled out of bed and did the podcast different voice completely and i wonder how that works and, and that's one of the things i'm i'm really interested in and, and this is starting to roll out um on some some android devices where you're going to be able to use some smart lock settings and use your voice to unlock the device mm. i'm interested to your point like if you're feeling a little bit under the weather or i feel like whatever they're doing like it's catching a different level of your vocals than that would affect Right? I would think. I don't know. I'm no voice scientist, but I would think. I, so, I have no clue how it works behind the scenes. I'm not certain I would trust it. No. Uh, I'm interested to see. Um, it, 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 it allows you to access your device when it recognizes you saying, OK, Google. Sorry, guys. So oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um. But when I use that to start up my device, mm -hmm. I don't, I just, I don't know. And those are those. So here, if you have a recording of this show, you now have me saying that. Right. <laughs> wow. So yeah. now that's the one thing I feel like. I think it's, it's another, it's another level, right? Yeah. It's another level of authentication. You don't depend on exclusively this. 
things. This plus a pin code. This plus uh, your thumbprint. But if you if you were going to use this plus a pin code, why not just use a pin code? Because you really don't want people to get into your Samsung. What, what is this? What, what phone is this? This this Google that Android. Looks like an HTC. Oh, it's just an app. Okay, yeah. it's just it's not it's not down to like a Samsung. Oh, phone. it's not that. It's no. This isn't a. This okay. isn't. A, this is actually gonna something that's gonna be baked into Android. Yeah, I mean, it, it just like the level of security you feel good with. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, it, it, but we're having options. You know, yeah. if you want to be secure, you can put all these things on your phone. You know, at, at this point, uh, the one cool thing would be is if. So those two words that I said earlier, and I apologize for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, what would be interesting, though, is if if it did key on your voice, and you were the only one that could at, that could actually say, okay, hmm, and actually it would your. <laughs> I feel like we're saying a dirty word. <laughs> the device would be the device would be unique to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't have just activated everyone's devices because it's only good for that one person. Right, right. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I say, I'm just glad to see there's options out there. So, um, so this update, did you put this in there? No, I put this in there. Uh, Amazon's Fire TV now tells you which actors and movies uh, are in movies and shows as you stream them. This, of course, only works in uh, Amazon Instant Video for the most part. I was playing with this a little bit. Uh, we were watching. I was John, watching John Wick. I had that credit from Google, and I actually was having a problem that the Google Play Store was not adequately playing from Chromecast anything. Hmm. I had to. I couldn't even. I couldn't even Chromecast it from my tablet. And my t my tablet. I had to screencast the tablet and play it, <laughs> and let the screen take over. And I had to leave the t the screen on in order for it to work. It was so weird. But then I got to see the, it would show every actor in the screen as they popped up. And it was so distracting to have these little bubbles with the faces pop up like throughout the movie sitting beside me. And even the music that I was playing at the time, you know, oh, that's a Marilyn Manson song. You click and presumably buy it on, on Apple Play. Um, it's a similar situation. You know, I, I think this is really cool because I remember um, first podcast Pittsburgh. Alex Lindsay was here talking about all the things you could do in QuickTime. And they talked about the idea that, like, they're showing a Brad Pitt video and he's wearing a shirt. And now, like, the information, and you can click on that shirt and you can buy the shirt. And they're like, this is going to be coming, right? Mm -hmm. It's here. Now it's here. <laughs> this is exactly what he's talking about. Many, many years later. And, we're, you know, because the question for me was always, you know, well, how are you going to implement that? What You need something on the other side. People are going to commonly watch movies. And now, after all this time, so many people have these boxes and these sticks and these watch in their tablets and everything. And there's an interface and there's a place common for this to happen. And it's kind of interesting to have seen it kind of grow up. Well, if you think any, anyone that could do that, it would be Amazon because they got their whole yes. store as the back Jeez. end. You want, I mean, think about it. You watch whatever TV show you're watching and, oh, I want that toaster or, oh, I want that, that shirt or I, whatever is in the actual show that you're watching. Mm -hmm. you could you could procure from amazon so i really like that idea actually now now i want a fire stick <laughs> and pretty cheap. pretty cheap man how many how many dongles and boxes do you have i don't have that many you have i have that, the chromecast you, you i have that chromecast that i use from time to time i don't use it as probably as much as i should i have the apple tv and here's what in i don't want to go too deep into this this topic because we will be very we, soon we will be very soon but the TiVo has a lot of capability that I don't think people give it credit for. With being able to... You have been the champion of the TiVo for the longest time. And somebody has to be. So, uh, so we missed... There's some TV show on TV land. I think it's called Younger. I don't mm -hmm. know. Carla started recording it or DVRing it. And she started three episodes in. So... The TiVo was smart enough to realize that she set up a recording, a, a series recording, and started on episode three. It actually went out and figured out that the first episode was free on instant, and the second episode was going to replay on TV land at a different time and automatically 
aggregated them into the same listing. That is so important. Because how many times <laughs> have you given up and you're like, I missed the first three episodes. They already expired on Hulu. And you just don't go back. Like, right. well, I'll wait for it to come back next year. So, but it'll it goes out to multiple. It goes out to multiple systems, aggregates everything into one list, and will try to find you also the cheapest way. Like it knew the second episode on instant, mm-hmm. you had to pay for. So it gave it as an option, but then gave you other options. So I, nice. th- I don't know. I, that device, and they keep adding services to it. I don't, I don't know. Like well, I said, we're, we'll, we'll be going we'll talk into about that, that a bit more. Different. So next week, we're not going to have a regular awesome cast. Uh, Doug Dirt is going to join us. He actually, I think, recently did a blog about cord cutting. He's done some in the past. Um, we've been having a lot of convers- great conversations on Twitter and Facebook about what he's been doing for cord cutting. He's going to join us. We're going to talk. We're going to specifically look at devices when it comes to cord cutting. So your dongles, your boxes, your tablets, however it is. And I think we're going to have a separate show later down the line about services, about whatever's going on there. Um, so we're going to talk about experiences. So, I mean, there's three of us. Maybe we'll get a fourth. We'll see what we can plan here throughout the week. Say, what are you using? What's working? What are the options out there? So if you're a new cord cutter looking to cord cut um and and i want to be clear you know I, it, cord cutting is not going to be for everyone there's actually really good options coming up for cable providers and satellite providers uh, uh direct tv streaming a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. um and, and sometimes those online alternatives are not cheaper too and but you have choice i guess the the question is where do you where do you draw the line of what's cord cutting and what's not cord cutting? Yeah, it's a general thing, but we'll talk about it. This is exactly yeah. the kind of stuff. Where we want to hear from you. Let us know on the Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+. Plus, and we'll be asking the question throughout the week for you guys to latch on to there. But we want to know what you're using physically. Uh, let us know your situation. Let us know what device you're using. And did you use a device, a dongle, a box that... Uh, I, realize, I realize context, some of those words I just said. <laughs> huh. Um, it's a double entire night here at Solar Shrine Media. But uh, let us know what you're using, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And uh, and, and we'd like to have a kind of a, a pretty much a big free-for-all discussion about that. Go down the line about, hey, this is this device, this is this device, this is this device. And help you pick the one that's right for you. Um, and uh, we're doing that here next week. Uh, so please join us. That's uh, the 21st here of April. And uh, you can join us live.circuitronmedia.com or live.awesomecast.net to join us for that conversation. Uh, other things going on around the internet, not the internet, but Pittsburgh at least. Um, of course, Spring P- Pitch Fest Court A Coder Edition is going down. Uh, there's a page over there at meetup.com, and uh, that's April 16th. That's Thursday night. Um, if you're looking to hire a uh, new tech talent of any sort, um, I, I think it was, I think it was a I think I was at one of these at the hardware store, um, not specifically looking for coders and stuff, but you know, pitching a lot of ideas at different stages. And it's always really interesting to see. April 30th is Tech Cocktail. Join them in Pittsburgh, and you can uh, look up Tech Cocktail for that. Uh, TEDx Pittsburgh is coming back May 23rd, the former TEDx Grandview Ave. Uh, go to TEDxPittsburgh.org and sign up to find out when tickets are going on. Not on sale, but uh, where you can get in on that. And Google I.O., did you put that in there? Yes. May 28th and 29th, WWDC, June 9th, the epicenter of change. What? That's their slogan. Oh, really? Yes. Ah, huh, Okay. Um, oh, there's that shot. I didn't use that all night. Uh, WordCamp Columbus. <laughs> I just found out this. I want to. I want to swing this over to the PodCamp people. Uh, July 17th and 19th in Columbus, Ohio. It's an annual con- conference for developers and users of WordPress. You can go to uh, the website is columbus.wordcamp.org for information on that. Create Festival is June 10th through 12th. Uh, here in Pittsburgh, uh, over at the Tech Council, and uh, oh, oh uh, we talked about previously. Yajagoff had a big comedy show at Arcade Comedy Theater. Go mm-hmm. check out check out Yajagoff.com and actually BoldPittsburgh.com. Uh, our friends over there uh, have a, have a write up about it as well. Uh, it looks like it went really, really well, and that's kind of man. This idea of podcast doing these live things, you know. Uh, I know the Epicast people do a few like that, um, so. And uh, we've attempted in the past. We, uh, you know, I was thinking we're we're overdue. We should go to Slice again for. Just, I definitely agree. Actually, we got an anniversary show coming up again. So, 
Cool. We'll have to plan something. Um, please go uh, awesomecast.net. We got all the in mini awesome casts. Like I said, uh, that is actually where I talked about the Apple Watch. Uh, Mortal Kombat X Mobile. Uh, first impressions. I talked about translations, about how my 90s something year old uh, great uncle is using Google Translate to catch up on his Lithuanian. Uh, I thought it was really, really fun. And of course, you know, Doug works at We Speak. I mean, that's a perfect right. word lens. Oh, so much stuff. It's breaking it down. So something I was listening to was talking about, I was like, we're not even going to have to learn language. Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about, we're not even going to have to learn languages in five years. It's just going to translate. We're going to universal translate this stuff. Isn't that speak. how it was in Star Trek? Star Trek. They, yeah. It was it, there was kind of like an implant. Yeah. That that just translated it. Even Wrath of Khan, which one was that? that was they the have the things one. that came down from the like that you spoke into, and then it had something. I don't even think it was an implant. Like back in Wrath of Khan, it was some kind of mm. device. Well, wow. almost like a almost like it cycled through some kind of back end Skype system, and then spit it back out into everyone else's ear so but in the star trek universe yes and of course sorgatron.com i got so many techie things we're talking about there social media how we're using it how we're communicating out there having a lot of fun with that thank you everybody for the feedback on that too um and i'm going to get more interactive if you wanted to make video like this well you gotta start somewhere and start by putting the lens on yourself we're doing a video challenge right now check out the weekly challenge video challenge Today, this week, Sorgatron.com is the April 14th edition of that. I already have a submission, Chilla. It's, this is so much fun. Um, and you talked and you talked about why can't people get a job. But he got in there, and he, he gave me like three minutes of video, and he's going to do it again tomorrow. And it's, oh, that's, that's awesome. We're getting people to create things. Because the first thing is taking that first step and... See if you'd like to be on camera, for one thing. Um, so it, it's a lot, a lot of fun going on over there. Um, that's it. Live.awesomecast.net. Tuesdays about 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, check us out on all the social medias. Big thanks to Mike Allen PR. Uh, Mike, on the Twitter is Michael Allen. Oh, wait, no. No, he's actually off for tonight. He's, he's checking in the next show. Uh, Missy actually helped the notes tonight. Uh, I was feeling bad because I forgot to plug him on every show last week for some reason. Um, so I'm trying to make up for it. So he gets an extra plug. And, of course, please subscribe to us everywhere. Please rate us on iTunes. That's very important so poor people can find the show and support us on Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast if you want to be my boss. You can contribute over there. We'll get you some extra content, too, as we uh, get some people in there. Uh, Chilla, at Chilla on Twitter. That's where you can find me. At John so Chilla on the Facebooks. At Sorgatron. And we'll see you guys. Thank you to our awesome chat room, Wheels. Uh, he paid three twenty nine for that, at, that uh, notebook, or uh, tablet, by the way. We're at? I don't know. He's in the chat. We'll catch okay. him up afterwards. Thanks to the awesome chat room. You've been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. What is this? What did I just do? I don't I know what that is. Is that I an just okay? Do a, I just did a half-assed John Cena sign. <laughs>